More and more people are switching from analog video transmitters to digital video transmitters like Walksnail, HD0, and DJI. And one of the most common questions that I am seeing more and more in my inbox is, how do I get the on-screen display working with them? That's what I'm gonna teach you in this video. We're gonna go through all the steps. Turns out it kinda doesn't matter which one you've got. The setup steps are basically the same and they're not that complicated. You just need somebody to show you what they are. Maybe that's me. We'll find out by the end of the video. I'm Joshua Bardwell, and you're gonna learn something today. The first step to getting the on-screen display working with your digital video transmitter is to connect it to the flight controller in the right way. And a lot of times there's just gonna be a plug that goes from one to the other, and you don't have to think too much about how to wire them up. But that's not always gonna be true. And even if it is true, you still are gonna benefit from understanding what those wires are and what they do as you move from wiring into the configuration phase of the setup. So here we've got a Cadex Vista video transmitter and we can see that it has a power wire, that's V for voltage or battery, G for ground, a ground wire, and then an RX and a TX. And then there's two more wires there that we don't need to worry about for the sake of getting the OSD working, they're for something else. If we look at the DJI Air unit, it has the exact same pinout, power, ground, RX and TX. Here's the O3 air unit. Again, power, ground, RX and TX. Here is the Walksnail video transmitter. Power, ground, RX and TX. And in fact, if we look at the HD0 freestyle video transmitter, it has the same thing. Okay, ground and power are in a different order. It goes ground power instead of power ground, but there is ground, power, TX, and RX. And there is another wire there that is used for something else that we don't need to get into in this video. It's in my full setup guide for these video transmitters, but that's not the point. Today, we're just talking about the on-screen display. Now, the purpose of the power and ground wire should be pretty self-explanatory. They power the video transmitter. The purpose of the TX and RX is a little bit less clear. These digital video transmitters can communicate with the flight controller using a protocol called MSP, and MSP is just basically a standard way for a peripheral to communicate with a flight controller about the things that the flight controller is doing. For example, when you bring up Betaflight Configurator and you connect to Betaflight Configurator, Betaflight Configurator is talking MSP to the flight controller. And when you make changes in the configuration, whatever those changes might be, and you hit save and reboot, the MSP protocol is used to communicate those changes to the flight controller. So in our case, the MSP protocol is being used to communicate from the flight controller to the video transmitter the information that the video transmitter is going to display on the on-screen display. But MSP is a lot more than that, but that in this case is what it's doing. And MSP goes over those TX and RX wires. If you don't get that right, well, a lot of things won't go right, but you won't be able to get your OSD at the very least. So how do you connect the video transmitter to the flight controller? This is gonna vary slightly depending on the exact way that your flight controller has been designed, but there are some common elements that you can understand and then you can figure it out for whatever flight controller you've got. Let's start by looking at the wiring diagram for the JBF7 V2 flight controller. That's the latest version of my very own flight controller. And you can see here on the wiring diagram, they're showing that we're gonna plug this uh, harness from the DJI Air unit into, well, the question we need to answer is, where do the TX and the RX wires go? We follow those wires and we can see that RX on the Air unit goes to TX on the flight controller and TX on the Air unit goes to RX on the flight controller. So this is rule number one when working with the TX and the RX is almost always the TX on the flight controller goes to RX on the peripheral and vice versa. That's a little counterintuitive. Sometimes people assume that you would wire TX to TX and that isn't actually the way it works. I talk, you listen. So TX goes to RX. And what we need to pay most attention to is the number that is next to the T and the R. So in this case, it's T1 and R1. What that's gonna tell us is that this is going to UART number one. What's a UART? UART is basically, it's like a USB plug. You plug a peripheral into a UART. There are a lot of differences between USB and 
UARTs, but basically in the same way that you plug a mouse into your computer's USB port and your computer can talk to the mouse, you plug or you connect a receiver or a video transmitter or some other type of peripheral into a UART on a flight controller and then they can communicate. And this is connected to UART number one. Here is the SpeedyB F405 flight controller, one of the best value flight controllers you can buy today. And if we scroll down and look for the wiring diagram, we can find the wiring instructions for a DJI Air unit, Cadex Vista, and we can look at the TX and the RX wires and we can follow them up here carefully and see that they also go to T1 and R1. That flight controller puts the video transmitter on UART1. Well, I wanted to give you one more example and I couldn't think of a flight controller to pick. So I just went to my website, fpvknowitall.com. I have a shopping list there, which has recommended parts in lots of different categories. Here we are on the five inch freestyle page and I'll just click flight controllers and see what I'm recommending. It looks like I'm recommending the T-Motor F7 HD. And if we click over to the product page for there, hopefully we'll find a wiring diagram. And sure enough, here is the DJI plug and we can see that it is connecting the TX and RX to, it looks like in this case, UART number two. We can also see that here in the wiring diagram, just in case it wasn't obvious to you how I knew that this plug was for the DJI uh, video transmitter. Couple things before we go on. I have been talking about DJI video transmitters. What about you, walk snail and HD zero people? Wow, well, I've been ignoring you. No, I haven't. All the manufacturers use DJI video transmitters in their wiring diagrams. The good news is that the Walksnail and the HD0 video transmitters can use the same wire harnesses. They can take the same voltage inputs and they are both gonna need a TX and an RX wire. If you're using HD0, remember those wires are in a different order, so you might need to modify the harness slightly, but you could still use it. But the key thing for our purposes is that the TX on the, on the video transmitter goes to RX on the flight controller and vice versa. In fact, if your flight controller doesn't have a convenient plug or you just don't feel like dealing with the plug, you can direct solder it. Here's the JBF7 flight controller again, and you can see there are tons of UARTs here. T1 and R1, T2 and R2, T3 and R3, T4 and R4, T5 and R5. There's tons of UARTs here, and you could solder those TX and RX wires to any of those UARTs if you decided that was what you wanted to do. The key thing is that you gotta know the UART number that those TX and RX wires go to. Once you know that, you're ready to proceed. Next, we're gonna go into Betaflight Configurator. And exactly what you do here is going to differ depending on if you are on Betaflight 4.4, which is the latest as of like literally 24 hours ago at the time that I'm recording this, or whether you're on Betaflight 4.3. I'm gonna show you both methods. We'll start with Betaflight 4.4 because that is what's on this flight controller at this exact moment. In Betaflight 4.4, it is actually much simpler to set up. They've made it way easier. You're gonna pick the UART number that you connected your video transmitter to. So on the JBF7, that was UART number one, if my memory's correct. You're gonna enable the MSP option as you just saw me do. And then you're gonna go over to peripherals and you're gonna choose VTX MSP plus display port. And that is basically all you need to do. Just hit save and reboot. And at that point, you should, you should have OSD working in your system. I hope. I hope. If you are on Betaflight 4.3, the process of setting it up is a little bit more complicated. There are some command line options that you need to put in that uh, can be a little difficult. Even for me to remember, I always have to look them up. The good news is that there is a Betaflight preset that does them automatically for you. So what you're gonna do on Betaflight 4.3 is you're gonna to go to the presets tab. You're gonna make sure you're looking at the Betaflight official presets repo. That's the default. Uh, but I have a couple other repos loaded. So just make sure you've got that. After that, you're gonna go to categories and select VTX. And then you are going to pick the Avatar HD VTX preset. Now, if you are not using an Avatar VTX, if you're using HD0 or DJI, this is still the right thing to do. Actually, DJI users, put a pin in that. I'm gonna come back to that in a second. It may not be the right thing for you to do, but for many people, this is gonna be the right thing to do. You're gonna choose the option map to display port. You will enable that and then you will pick which UART your video transmitter was on. So again, in my case, it was on UART number one. And so that is what we're gonna select. And then 
Here are the CLI options it's going to paste in. Uh, and then we're just going to hit the pick option. And then we're going to hit save and reboot. At this point, your flight controller should be talking to your video transmitter and they should be ready to, dis to draw the on-screen display in your goggles. You're going to go to the OSD screen and you're going to choose which OSD elements you want to turn on and you're gonna drag those old elements around on screen and set them up how you want them to be. I've got a whole video discussing all of the Betaflight OSD screen for Betaflight 4.3. If you wanna know more about what these elements are and how to set them up, I'll link that down in the video description. But there is a gotcha here that you need to know about. The first gotcha is this. Do you see that as I drag the OSD elements around, there's this grid that I can put the OSD elements on. And the grid is basically one character high and one character wide. And it is a really low resolution grid. And it is a 4-3 aspect ratio grid like old standard definition video. But we're high definition digital video. We're usually using goggles with widescreen 69 displays. If you're using Betaflight 4.4, you can have the option of enabling the HD canvas, just like you see here. And when you do that, that grid will get smaller, the letters will get smaller for your high resolution screen, and you'll be able to put them on a 16.9 widescreen canvas instead of on a 4.3 canvas where they're sort of in the center of the screen. Now, that is currently supported by HD0 and walk snail. And if you are using the DJI V2 system and you have rooted the, the air unit and the goggles with WTFOS, more about that in a second, but if you've done that, then you know you did that, then that is supported. At the time that I'm making this video, the HD canvas is not supported by the O3 air unit and the goggles too. However, DJI is actively working on it. I know this not just from DJI, but from the Betaflight devs who have confirmed that they have been communicating with DJI about it. And it is supposed to be coming very, very soon. In fact, it may be coming, it may be here by the time you're watching this. If you have the O3 Air unit and the goggles too, and you enable HD canvas and all your stuff stays in the center of screen instead of being stretched to the widescreen, you just have to wait. And in the meantime, you should just use PAL video format, which will give you that older canvas. For everyone else, you should use the HD format because that's, that's better. There's one more gotcha, unfortunately. And that other gotcha is gonna apply if you have the DJI V2 goggles and you have a non O3 air unit like Cadex Vista or the older DJI air unit. And if you have not rooted those and installed WTFOS, in, in other words, if you're using them out of the box. If you're in this situation, then they do not support the full Betaflight OSD with the MSP DisplayPort functionality. They can only display a limited number of these OSD elements and the method of laying them out on screen is a little bit different. In this case, you're gonna go into the goggles and enable show custom OSD, and then you will only be able to use some of these elements. Uh, there's a list out there somewhere of which elements are and aren't supported. I'll find it and I'll put a link down in the video description. Okay, here's the list. Thanks to Oscar Leong, there's a link to his webpage uh, where he's got this list uh, down in the video description. If you are using the V1 or V2 goggles, with a Vista generation video transmitter like the Cadex Vista, Runcam Link, original DJ air unit, basically anything except the O3 air unit, then these are the only OSD elements that you can use. If you want to get full access to the full Betaflight OSD, including all OSD elements, the menus, everything, then you have these choices. Number one, root the goggles and install WTFOS. I have a tutorial about how to do that down in the video description. I highly recommend it, but it is a little bit technical for some people. Number two, if you are using the O3 Air unit, then you always get full access to the full Betaflight OSD, no matter what goggles you're using. Or number three, if you have the Vista generation air unit and the goggles too, you can update the Vista to firmware 01.01.0000 or newer and update the goggles too to, uh, I believe it's 01030000 or newer. And when you have done that, the Vista can bind to the goggles too, and it will get full access to the Betaflight OSD. Clear as, clear as, mud. Hope it was helpful. At this point, I hope that your on-screen display is working. If it's not working, you are welcome to contact me. My email is jb at joshuabardwell.com. You're welcome to contact me and I will do my best to help you out with it. I don't just reserve that right to my patrons or my subscribers. 
I try to help everybody who emails me uh, as much as I can. So leave comments if you want to. It's good for the analytics, but I can't, I don't always see all the comment comments on all my videos. So the best thing to do is just get right in touch with me, jb at joshuabardwell.com. If I have helped you, and if you feel like today's the day that I've earned it, I'd love to have you as a patron. Patreon is a website where you can subscribe to me for as little as $2 a month or more if you feel like I've earned it. The amount you subscribe at is totally up to you. You can stop whenever you want. You get access to my Discord server, which is full of helpful, friendly people, but mostly, hopefully, you just feel good about giving back for all of the help that I've hopefully provided you. If not, that's fine. You can still get in touch with me. I don't check when you email me, whether you're a patron or not. Uh, I just answer everybody. But if today's the day, there's a link in the video description down below to my Patreon. I'd love to have you as a supporter. What next? What next? If you have the V2 system and the goggles, V the V2 goggles and like the Vista video transmitter, you gotta root them, okay? Uh, I'm just, I'm not gonna hedge that anymore. You gotta root them and you gotta get that full MSP DisplayPort OSD working. I got a tutorial about how to do it. Boom, it's right there. Uh, and on the other hand, if you wanna know more about the OSD tab and all of that stuff, boom, I got a tutorial over here and you definitely check that out. It's part of my Betaflight complete walkthrough where I went through every single tab in Betaflight Configurator and talked about all the options except for the one tab that I left out by accident and still haven't gone back and redone. Which tab was it? Only one way to find out. <laughs> Watch the whole playlist. <laughs> right. I'll see you there. <laughs>